If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Friday, December 27th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. We continue our look back at the best Morning Swim Show episodes of 2013 now with a March, March 19th interview with Natalie Coglin. We asked her to be on the show to look back at her illustrious NCAA career and talk about her new training environment in Berkeley, California. Natalie is annually one of our favorite guests on the show, and we're about to show you why. Natalie, it's great to see you again. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. <laughs> well, I can imagine you're doing well. It looks like a great day again in the Bay Area. It is. It is. We're pretty lucky up here. <laughs> well, um, I would say um, it was more than luck that um, got you all of your success in your college career, Cal. I mean, 11 NCAA individual titles. At the time, when you were in the middle of all this, did you ever think, wow, I've just won 8, 9, 10, 11 races? Um yeah, I, I became more and more aware of it as my senior year went on because people started talking so much about, you know, the fact that I had won, um, you know, the 100 back fly and 200 back at, at my previous NC2As. And so going into my senior year, um, that there was a lot of talk, but uh, I tried to ignore it as much as I could, and it's hard, but... Um, yeah, gosh, it, NC2A seems like ages ago for me because, you know, honestly, it was. <laughs> well, and, and this may be like asking a, ch a parent to pick their favorite child, but is do any of those 11 races stick out more than the others? Definitely. Um, there are a couple. I would say the 100 Butterfly against Misty Hyman my freshman year. Um, that was coming off of her success uh, at the 2000 Olympic Games. And... Um, you know, I, that was when I was really learning more and more about Butterfly. And so that was a very, very tough race for me. And she had beat me at the Pac-10 at the time uh, conference meet the two weeks beforehand. So that was a tough race. Um, and then the my sophomore year's Hunter Backstroke, which is still the American record or my, my best time, um, that was my seat, my sophomore year in Austin, Texas, and just one of those times where the race, everything just kind of clicked, and I was really excited, and um, it just felt good from start to finish. Well, you know, we must think alike, because I was thinking those two races are probably the ones that will stand out, beating Misty Hyman <laughs> and going under 50 seconds and then Hunter Backstroke. I mean, what, is it, what does it feel like to see 49-9 in a Hunter Backstroke race? It's pretty great, especially when I went 50.0 several times before that. <laughs> and uh, I would like to say I went under 50 in the 100 fly. I was so close. Um, so maybe if I do a short course race in the future, I could try and dip under uh, 50 point. But, um, but yeah, it, it felt good to finally break that barrier in, in the 100 backstroke because I had been so close for, for you know, a few months. Well, I want to stick with this 100 fly, 100 back, because at NCAAs in the second day, that is a tough double to do. You know, a lot of people are doing it now and, and doing very well with it, but um, very few people have actually can say that they have won the 100 back and the 100 fly at the same meet, much less, you know, four times in a row. Um, how, tough is it, how tough is it to do that double? It's, it is a tough double uh, just because you usually have that first relay and then you have the 100 fly and then about an hour or, or so later you have the 100 backstroke. For me that always worked out really well because the 100 fly was usually my tougher race of the, of the night so it was nice to get the tougher race out of the way. Um, but as, as far as doubles is concerned, I had done the 200 free 100 back or 100 fly 200 free double at conference rate at conference meets and that is that's a nearly impossible double so <laughs> uh, compared to those the 100 back 100 fly is kind of nice because it's the first and last or one of the first and one of the last events 
Now, with you especially, those two races are so underwater focused. I mean, you're spending more than half the race underwater. So is it more about, uh, in the recovery time that you have, that hour, is it more about getting your legs ready for it or getting your lungs kind of built up for going underwater again? More than anything, it's just about focusing on one race at a time. And your legs are going to be shot after after that second night of competition, especially if you're someone who does all the relays and then you have three individual uh, events. So your legs are definitely taking a beating. So it's just about getting up for that first relay and then getting up for the 100 butterfly as much as possible, warm down, and then just get warm and stay loose and, and get ready for that backstroke. But short course swimming is really about the skills of swimming. So underwaters, the breakouts, the turns, and nailing all, all of that. And that's where all the training comes uh, into play because you have to be disciplined in, in training to to be able to do that in a race, especially when you're really, really tired. And I would imagine that kind of definitely translated over to you for long course swimming. I mean, if you're if you're so great underwater in short course, and I know it's not as much in long course, but it definitely you know makes it more of an asset for you. It, it translates into long course. I mean, I, I wish <laughs> I wish the Olympics and everything was short course. Uh, I think I'd swim a, a lot longer and probably a lot more races. But um, yeah, underwater uh, underwaters come into play even in the 50 meter course, uh, just not nearly as much. And the turns don't play as much of a role in long course swimming as they do in short course. Well, I have to bring up that one individual event that you weren't able to win, that 200 backstroke in 2004. Uh, what are your thoughts on that race looking back now? Looking back, I, I should have done the 100 freestyle like I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Terry really wanted me to just stick with the same uh, event schedule that I had done the previous years. And um, I was kind of pushing for the 100 freestyle, but I stuck with tuner backstroke and it's fine. I, you know, it, it kind of sealed the deal that I shouldn't do the tuner backstroke at uh, the 2004 uh, Olympic trials, because uh, honestly, I, I hated that event. <laughs> and it kind of just highlighted the fact that I should be doing the 100 freestyle, which um, after after NC2As, I, I focused on 100 backstroke and, and 100 freestyle and ha was quite successful in both uh, that, that summer in 2004. Uh, there was a lot of talk in 2004 about whether you would go pro before, during your senior year, before your senior year. Was that was that ever a discussion that you and Terry were ever having? Yes, I had a lot of discussions about going pro um, after I think it was about 2002 is when um, you know people started talking into my in my ear about going pro and especially because I had so so much success at the World Cup circuit and then internationally I was getting some success um, and it was the years leading up to the Olympic Games and I you know, talk to a lot of people. I talked, you know, to Rowdy Gaines. I talked to Janet Evans. I talked to Mark Schubert, um, Matt Biondi, and and really s sought out advice uh, from people who had been in a similar situation. And I was so grateful that people gave me their honest feedback. And um, it for me, I knew that the opportunity to go pro would be there after my senior year and I just wanted to finish out my college career and um, I realized that going pro means that you have a full-time job and and that's not that's not how people kind of consider it. Uh, I enjoyed swimming as as my sport and I didn't want to think of it as my job just yet and um, even though I love being a professional athlete, it, it does become your job, and it's different when you have contracts and, and things riding on, on each race. And it was probably well-timed, at least, that your senior year coincided with the Olympic Games, so you, you pretty much had that nice transition into it to being a professional swimmer anyway. Yeah, I, I, I had a few months to get... Uh, um, you know, to get some sponsorships before the Olympic Games, uh, and I was very, very fortunate. Um, but going, you know, looking back, I think I made the best decision for me in the long term, um, setting up my career, and then just, just mentally, it's just, it's different when you become a professional, and um, you know, the the way you make your living is is tied up with how you're racing, and um, it's something I love, but it's incredibly stressful at times. 
And Terry McKeever was uh, a big guiding force for you at Cal uh, during those four years. And she wasn't as well known as a coach then as she is now. Uh, what was the key to, uh, to it being such a great relationship between the two of you? Gosh, that's such a hard question because Terry has been, you know, the most influential person in my career, and I'm so grateful for everything Terry has done for me. Um, when I came to Cal, I had just missed the Olympic team in 2000, um, and I was coming off a pretty, pretty significant shoulder injury, and um, I wasn't even sure if I was going to swim for four more years. I honestly hated the sport, and I was so burnt out and. Um, I mentally just wasn't in a very good place and Terry was incredibly nurturing to me those especially those first few months when I just was completely overwhelmed and um, we worked together as a partnership for so many years and um, and that's exactly what I needed I needed someone who cared about me as a person as well as a swimmer and who pushed me when I needed it but more than anything just helped guide me and and was a partner in uh in my career and i would imagine um, now i think that's would you say that's kind of what's really helped her grow as a coach and help cal grow as a team right now in 2013 i th i think so i mean terry has gained so much confidence as a coach. I mean, she was confident back then, but she knows she's one of the best coaches on, on the pool deck. And um, it's shown over the past several years with um, the girls winning, you know, NC2As and, um, you know, other individual uh, successes. And, and she's, um, she's definitely matured isn't the right way to, the, to describe it because she was already mature to begin with but um, she's just become better and better and uh, it's been a pleasure to have been working with her for so long. What do you think of this current run of team championships that Cal is on right now? I'm very proud to call myself a Cal Bear and um, I think that we're blessed at Cal with the coaching staff that we have. You know, we have Terry and Kristen and Dave and Yuri and, um, you know, we don't necessarily have the best, and, and Nick Falker, um, uh, but we don't necessarily have the best um pool situation <laughs> and we're, we're trying to remedy that um, but we make the most out of what we have and uh, it's something that we're very proud of and um, I'm hoping the the men and women this this uh, coming few weeks are gonna do really really well. <laughs> and when you talk about something you're gonna remedy with the pool situation are we talking about a new facility there in Berkeley? We're, we're trying to get a new facility, and I, we have the site, we have the location, uh, we have um, most of the money, it's just about getting it done. Um, you know, building in California is never easy, um, but uh, that would definitely alleviate uh, some of our pool issues, but it's, it's really not about the facilities, it's, it's about the people and um, the team and the camaraderie and, and how people work together, and, and they've the the two teams have done such a good job over the past several years and um i i'm so proud to be a part of of that legacy well we're proud to see you back in the pool you just uh finished up a couple meets over in europe did some some 50 long course races oh, i believe they were in france and, and great britain what was it back what was it like to be back racing again it felt great it felt great to be racing again um this year i'm I'm thinking I'm just going to focus more on freestyle just to mix it up. You know, I've been a, uh, you know, I've been a swimmer so long. You got to change things up every once in a while to keep yourself motivated and excited. And uh, mentally, I feel like I'm in a really great place. And um, I got better and better as the meets went on. Uh, we raced in Marseille for a couple days and then traveled to, to England and, and raced a couple more days in Leeds. And it was good to have back-to-back -back meets and to make changes, um, you know, within a couple days. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it was nice to get my first races out of the way since London. And I'm excited about this season. And how has training been going for you? Training has been going really well. I've been consistently training since January. And... Um, 
I'm loving it. You know, I'm, I'm focusing on freestyle and, um, you know, I, I've just, I've figured out what meets I'm going to be going to. I'm going to go to Mesa and then Santa Clara and then, uh, world trials. So, um, I have the, the schedule in front of me and I have the goals in place and, um, I've been enjoying the training. So I, uh, I'm really pleased at where my head's at and, um, where I'm hopefully headed this summer. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand that you're uh, still training over there at Cal, but uh, you've shifted a little bit over to the post-grad team with training with some men now? Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been really fun. Um, I've been training with Nathan and Anthony, um, and uh, we have our, you know, post-grad sprinter group going, and uh, it's fun because they kick my butt every single day. Um, you know, they're, you know, two of the best sprinters in the world and I, and, uh, I got to race them every single day and it, it, it's fun. It's fun to have a post-grad group and, um, you know, I've been a post-grad. This is my ninth season being a post-grad at Cal and it can be difficult at times when you don't have, um, you don't have that 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 team uh, aspect that you would on the college team, so it's nice to have, uh, you know, my uh, training buddies. And the fact that they kick my butt just keeps me motivated, and and it's really fun. Well, I know you said when you got to Cal that you were wondering if you were ever going to make it past your four years in college, and here you are, like you said, nine <laughs> years as a post grad. Yeah, yeah I, it's crazy. I did, I really wasn't even sure if I was going to make it through my freshman year. Um, that That's where my head was at when I came to Cal. And here I am, 13 years later, still swimming. And I could promise you I didn't think I was going to be swimming this long. But as I get older and older, I just realize how fortunate I am to be uh, a professional athlete. And, and I've had so many wonderful opportunities and wonderful people who have supported me along the way. And um, I basically want to do this as long as I possibly can because <laughs> I know it's not going to last forever and right now I'm enjoying myself and uh, looking forward to the future. Well it definitely shows Natalie we're glad to see you back in the pool and thanks so much for the walk down memory lane it's always fun to uh, look back on on our careers and it kind of helps you go forward. Oh thanks for having me I'm uh, I, I you know really appreciate all the support that you guys have shown me throughout the years and um, I love being on the show. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll see you in Mesa in a few weeks. All right. Sounds great. Thanks. All right. So that was Natalie Coughlin joining us in the Finis Monitor. And be sure to stay with SwimmingWorld.com all through the NCAA Championships for the most complete coverage of the meet anywhere. And that's going to do it for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.